In the traditional computing world, you would provide a computer with a program and some data and the computer would give you an output. So for example, if my program was to calculate a uh, multiplication, then I would give it two numbers, the program and the computer would give me the output. But with AI, things are a little bit different. With AI, I give the computer some data, I give it an output, and it gives me a program that can help me repeatedly compute this particular output. Say, for example, loan applications in a bank. With AI, I can give the computer loan applications. The outcome from those loan ap applications, whether it was good credit, bad credit, and once I do that, the computer can generate for me an algorithm or a program that can help me process loan applications in the future, automating the process. So AI is a lot about algorithms, creating new algorithms, and that's what's different, and that's what's paradigm shifting. So most businesses today have embraced technology extensively, especially with mobile and cloud and big data. Uh, and, and all this technology is generating a lot of information, an extensive amount of information. And imagine this information is, is, is not just text, it's not just structured data. It's pictures, it's sounds, it's videos, it's, it's information from sensors and so much more. And it is impossible for a human being to actually make sense of all the data that is coming out from everything that we use in our business today. In fact, I have seen organizations with large teams barely able to scrape the surface and make sense of this data. And, and this is where AI can really help us. Uh, take, for instance, lawyers and case law. It is impossible for a single lawyer to know about every single case and every single outcome that has happened in the last few years. Uh, similarly, consider medicine and consider an oncologist. It's impossible for an oncologist to keep up with 8,000 or 9,000 papers that are released every month, let alone every oncology case or every cancer case and the outcome from those cases. And this is why we need AI, because AI can help us analyze this data, process it, and help us reason and make sense of this data. So ultimately, that is what AI is about. AI is about programming and software and technology that can ultimately help us think, process, and then make good recommendations and give us actionable insights from the data that we have today. So while we say that AI is paradigm shifting and while, the, while there's all this hype around AI, ultimately, like any other technology, AI is still about the same things. How can we improve productivity? How can we improve efficiency? And how can we make our lives better at work and our home and at our home using AI? So if you're starting on your AI journey today, here are five simple things that you can start right now to start on your journey with AI. Create a guiding team. That's one. Number two. Identify areas which are AI friendly. Number three, make sure that you have the enabling structures to support AI. Identify critical resources who can help you with AI. And the last and the most important one is to focus on people, on culture, and on shared values that can help you deploy AI successfully in your organization. Step one is to create a good cross-functional guiding team. Who should this team be led by? We recommend that this team be led by a senior manager, preferably somebody who has been in the organization for a long time and someone who's respected across different functional and business units. Um, who should this person report to? Should this person report to the CIO or the CTO? Neither. We feel that this person should report to the CEO and the CEO should be the sponsor for this program. Uh, we believe that this team should have people from different functional areas and the first task for this team should be to create a good, compelling vision of a desirable future, a future that involves artificial intelligence used extensively in your organization. Step two is to identify AI-friendly areas. Uh, start from the periphery, look at HR or finance or accounting, and then move towards the core. Um, and when you look for AI-friendly areas, there are a few key factors that you can consider. Data is important. Uh, approaches to AI like supervised learning require a large amount of data. In fact, the performance of an AI system is directly correlated to the size of the neural network and more importantly, to the amount of data that we have at hand. Uh, say for example, if you consider loan applications, you need a very large number of loan applications together with their outcomes to successfully create a program or an AI system that can, that can then determine whether a particular loan application should be approved or rejected, whether it be good credit or bad credit. This makes data a very valuable asset for you. In fact, it's probably a source of competitive advantage and creates a moat that can be hard to breach. Uh, do you have data with you today? Does your organization have these sources of data? Should you try to acquire data as a strategic asset? Then consider tasks. 
tasks which take a second or less, tasks which are very easy to do. These are ones that typically lend themselves very well to automation. So you could even consider activities that require a sequence of tasks that take no more than a second. Uh, think about a security who's standing at the entrance uh, to your organization and who's trying to recognize whether a person who walks in belongs to your organization or not. It just takes a second. These are tasks that are easy to automate and where AI can be a big help. Step three then is an important one and this is to identify critical resources across all your different business units. Uh, at some point of time, you will want to matrix in these people into your AI program. Say for example, if you're planning to start uh, a proof of concept in HR for recruitment where you are going to read through a large number of resumes to try and predict whether a particular candidate is suitable for your organization or not. In such a situation, you want to make sure that the smartest person from HR who understands AI is now available to work with your program team on a full-time basis. Identify these resources early, talk to their managers, and make sure they are available when you need them. Step four is very important as well, and this is to create enabling structures. Uh, do you have the right reward programs, the KPIs, the trainings that are essential for your staff to ramp up to AI? And we are not just talking about the AI team or your guiding team here. We are talking about the entire organization because job descriptions will change, roles will change. Some roles will become redundant while new roles will be generated. And we'll talk more about that in step five. But the important thing is to make sure that you have the right enabling structures in place before you start the change. Step five is the most important one. This is about people and about culture. With any technology deployment comes the fear of people losing their jobs. And with AI, this is going to be very apparent because roles are going to disappear. So how can you make sure that you get past the anger, the pessimism, and the cynicism that the technology, that the technology change brings in? Um, it is important for you to make sure not only that people are well trained, but also that people have a vision for the future, that they know that they have a role to play in the future of the organization. The change with AI is, is, is not so much about thinking and analysis, it is more about seeing and feeling. It is a behavioral change. And you need structures in place to make sure that this behavioral change can be enabled through the right leadership and through the right programs. So AI makes certain roles redundant, but AI also provides new job opportunities. Consider customer service, for example. If you are planning to use chatbots, which can interact with your customers, this does not make your customer support team redundant. In fact, you need the smartest and the brightest minds from there to train your artificial intelligence systems and make sure that they are actually giving the right responses to your customers. These people could be trained to train the AI systems by writing scripts, by using cognitive ergonomics to make sure that the AI actually gives your customers a nice customer experience. Change is never easy, and whether you like it or not, AI will disrupt your industry. You can choose to ignore this, but doing so is a massive and extraordinary risk. But you also have the choice to start working towards embracing AI, to start working towards bringing AI on board in a manner that works for you and for the people who have made your business a success.